the 2024 Los Angeles Clippers. Another absolute failure of a season in the last Hail Mary attempt to go all in, trading nearly multiple role players for 34 year old playoffs James Soften, having Russell Westbrook activate Westbrook in full effect for the entire playoffs. Paul George being way off P again, Kawhi Leonard's knees failing him. The championship window for this franchise absolutely positively over. Break it up. Off to Inglewood. Getting absolutely blown down, destroyed, obliterated, annihilated, and ran out the gym with another edition of the Luka Kyrie special. This time, it was Kyrie Irving himself from locking up James Frauden and Paul George made Kyrie look like an all-defensive first-teamer. That's what the franchise get for getting rid of Baron Davis's contract years ago, freeing up cap space, package an unprotected pick for Mo Williams and Jamario Moon. That pick eventually became the future Hall of Famer, who officially ended the Clippers' time at Crypto.com Arena, scoring 28 of his 30 points second half. Game 6 gave PG Tucker warning signs to retire. Mr. Cardio King looked helpless out there. Just one example of the hundreds of terrible front office decisions since the franchise began in 1970. But we'll save all that history stuff for another day. Five seasons now gone by since the Kawhi Paul George duel, for zero championships, a magnitude of injuries, historical playoff chokes to epic proportion, their biggest success getting to the conference finals 2021 after Kawhi tore his ACL thanks to the brilliant coaching of Ty Lue with Terrence Mann, followed up by failed postseasons, made the play in 2022 but failed to beat the Pelicans. A first round exit disrupted due to yet another Kawhi knee injury one full year later after the league implemented a 65 game requirement for all NBA eligibility, Leonard played 68 games only to break down late in the regular season, didn't play the final 8 games, super rusty, actually ruined team chemistry, came back game 2, an ugly 15 points, 7 of 17 shooting, what in the world was the dysfunctional organization thinking? to bring Leonard back so soon, team just won game 1 without him, Kawhi needed all the rest he can possibly get, went on to also play game 3, both losses to no avail, even with a healthy Leonard, all the key guys in their mid 30s, way too slow, old, team desperately needed fresh legs managing the injury prone Kawhi and PG, elected to trade for the biggest notorious playoff choker of this generation. To be fair, Harden did play like his all-star self the first 5 games, solid averages, but once the series gets deeper, especially without a real closer in a healthy Kawhi, James' last two playoff games a predictable result, an absolute travesty back-to-back -back performance, just proving who he already was. But Harden indeed most responsible for the two wins, pretty solid numbers for being considered a third option if he was still on Philly, would have likely gotten the easiest path to the conference finals even without a healthy Joel Embiid. As for Pandemic P, given all the franchise's mistakes and failures, it would truly be the icing in the cake if SGA leads OKC to a few Future championship within the next one to three years, who's already in the top five player discussion, led the Thunder to the number one seed, something the Clippers franchise never reached. SGA right now, arguably better than Paul George ever was. LAC eventually did become the one seed only a few days the month of February, their highlight of the season before it went tumbling down, typical Clipper stuff at its finest, PG knowing he needed to step up and play like a superstar for any chance of winning, proceeded to average under 20 points, 41% shooting, continues to be way too streaky, 10 of 31, game 5 and 6, 4 of 16 from 3, celebrated his birthday, not looking too pleased, played like he had no pressure, and Anticipated to have played his final game with the Clippers, Paul George likely off to another team to start a free agency. His tenure with the Clips, I give it a D minus, avoiding a fat F only due to leading his team to one conference finals, something the franchise failed to do their first half a century of existence, balling out the four straight wins on Utah. That season was the last time the Clippers got out of round 1, other than that, George has been an absolute travesty, way too unreliable with injuries, 5 underwhelming seasons in LA, only made one All-NBA third team, 
at this stage of his career needs to play for a team that can afford to give him plenty of rest like the Orlando Magic, George absolutely does not deserve the max at 34 years old, averaging less points than his regular season self in a big series without his best player, would need to opt into his player option for a trade to even be possible. Way too passive of a personality on the court, not a leader, just like Harden and Kawhi going through the motions, half-ass intensity, proven time and again, Paul George George and James Harden still has a few years left being borderline star players, but both don't want it as badly. PG couldn't even breathe while getting locked up by Kawhi, Derek Jones Jr., and PJ Washington, especially with Luka not even playing close to his best self. Russell Westbrook, way past his prime days, looks so terrible out there, literally unplayable. After game 1, playoff Russ, an absolute travesty of a performance. A series to consider retirement. If y'all thought shooting 25% from the field was bad, Russ shot 19%, 2 of 13 from 3 looked totally washed out there, especially sharing the floor with the atrocious Mason Pumbley, zero spacing, offensive liabilities, indefensible job by Ty Lu. what the heck was he even thinking? Also with PJ Tucker at the same time, those three talk about the Elite Cardio Hall of Fame lineup. From running full steam down court, loses the ball, or blurps up anything near the rim with no chance at going in, Westbrook's lack of awareness remains to be one of the worst decision makers for any top 75 player in big games, always been the same exact player, only now, diminished athleticism, can't shoot, coughs up perfectly, laying the groundwork for the new Clippers arena, one brick at a time. On to Kawhi Leonard, absolutely holding the entire franchise hostile, super injury prone, way too much uncertainty, played a total of 4 of a possible last 19 Clipper playoff games, zero leadership qualities, the franchise extending him to 3 years 151 million, an absolute travesty of a decision, that just tells everyone they will continue going all in, having no picks for the future, his prime days long gone, Shaping up to be one of the strangest careers all time, Leonard was on trajectory, possibly becoming a top 15 all time great before joining the Clippers, but is he even top 30 player all time right now? He's absolutely no longer a top 12 player in the league, Mr. Unreliable, even having fewer career points than Tobias Harris, who went scoreless his last game with Philly, Leonard could have honestly repeated as champ. Had he elected to stay with Toronto in 2020 and finish out his career there, a team already with chemistry that allowed him to low manage however he wants in the regular season, but this Clippers franchise continues bending the knee for him, forcing them to trade for Paul George or else, went on to also play game 3, both losses to no avail, even with a healthy Leonard, all the key guys in their mid 30s causing them superstar and potential all time great Shea Gildress Alexander failed to be patient after two serious knee injuries, it's delusional at this point for many to hold on to false hopes, praying Kawhi be healthy, his medical staff never transparent, dating back to his San Antonio days, Ty Lu having no idea until near game time whether Leonard be available to play, only his inner circles knows how he's really feeling, his injuries could be day to day, turns out to be several months, an absolute nightmare. Clipper fans absolutely had enough and rather elect to rebuild entirely instead of being held hostage to false title aspirations. Failing to finish off a playoff run on the court since the bubble meltdown, Kawhi brings nothing positive to the team while on the sidelines. The fact that Kyrie and Jalen Brunson left off Team USA and Kawhi, who's never healthy to play Leonard gets in, undeserving on all levels. This franchise could have just built around SGA and be where the Dunders at right now. The Clippers window realistically ended after 2021, Leonard never the same after the knee injury. Him and PG couldn't even beat a young Jamal Murray and Jokic 4 years ago, even if healthy. These Clippers would have gotten smoked by the Nuggets easily to Minnesota, Dallas would have beaten them even with a healthy Kawhi, and OKC, the way younger, faster, more athletic team. They're better than the Clippers going forward, especially for the next 5 years. GM Lawrence Frank, an absolute travesty of a front office, giving up Isaiah Hartenstein for a washed John Wall, whose NBA career ended after suiting up for the Clips, trading Luke Kennard in a first for Eric Gordon, trading Patrick Beverly, who's still useful but has his own problems now. 
for the washed up Eric Shanghai Bledsoe, this franchise also can't draft anybody good as of late. From never having a starting quality point guard until James Harden at the expense of the useful defensive Nick Batum constantly trying to plug holes to please Kawhi and PG mortgaging their entire future. This franchise suffering the consequences of the player empowerment era, letting Kawhi dictate who he wants, backfiring terribly. Head coach Ty Lu, a year left on his contract, sick to his stomach. The Lakers not much of a better option either. The Clippers can pay him all the money in the world. For owner Steve Ballmer, making awful investment decisions, being front row seats of every home game, the final one in Lakers arena, blown out by 30, the most lifeless team these playoffs with their backs against the wall, play with no heart or pride, from being second fiddle to the Lakers in LA, all these decades, the endless bad decisions, a long list of terrible mistakes, from getting rid of young Moses Malone, failing to draft future Hall of Famers, to Donald Sterling forcing a move from San Diego to Los Angeles, we knew how he turned out, the Lop City curse, major injuries, to every big name star who played with this franchise, and failing to give us one of the most anticipated series all time in the 2020 Battle of LA, Michael Porter Jr's dagger game 5 to seal the deal, team passed him up for the horrendous Jerome Robinson, the cursed Clippers have failed will continue to fail throughout all the decades of Clipper basketball until perhaps they finally get out of Los Angeles, move to San Diego. For now, heading into next season, no need to be paying attention to the dysfunction of this franchise.